my people how are you doing reminding you it's that time again of our show in styles you guys already know in style is a show that brings to you every single thing that is related to fashion every single thing that you want to know in your fashion world of your celebrity every single detail that is related to fashion is always on our show in style well before we say much we say a very big thank you for those of you who keep watching the show either in the country or outside country thank you so much keep watching the show because this is a show that you do not have to miss well before we say much let's hit it up with the coming ups then we'll be right back Coming up next, we have the smash look with the cutters Beyonce, Jay-Z and Blue Ivy that stole the show at the Beauty and the Beast premiere all dressed in Gucci. And that will be followed up with an interview we had with Mani Martin, a random local artist who told us on how his career all started and a bit of his sense of style. And that will be proceeded with a look tip where we shall talk about what we wear on a rainy season and that will end with the current trends and fashion shows that have been happening in the fashion world. And here we're talking about the New York Fashion Week that happened lately. As usual fashionistas, we always start our show with a smash look and our smash look of this week is the beautiful family, the Carters, Beyonce, Jay-Z and Blue Ivy. This beautiful couple, should I say this beautiful family, they looked ravishing at the beauty and the best premiere in a very, very beautiful Gucci gown, mostly Beyonce and the daughter just smashed the mother and of course Jay-Z was looking so amazing in a jean jacket. Let's see them as our smash look of this week. And our smash look of this week goes to the Carters. On Monday morning, a 35-year-old musician who is pregnant with twins shared a slew of photos when she and the husband Jay-Z took their five-year-old daughter, Blue Ivy, to the premiere of The Beauty and the Beast on Thursday night, where the mother and daughter duo appear to have coordinated their red carpet look. Beyonce chose a green embellishment. She found stand in a cleavage baking floor-length green gown with a floral embellishment that she paired with a big loop earring and several large rings. While Blue wore a sleek, rough dressed with a green top decorated with braided birds. The whole family was in Gucci, including Jay-Z, who wore a shearling lined embroidered dying jean jacket, blue match her mother in an adorable green pink dress, while Jay-Z, the 47, opt for a trendy jean jacket that featured a lion and a floral crest with similar colors as the wife and daughter. While the premiere was on Thursday, many people know how Beyonce loves the surprise photo reveal. Few days later, she posted the photo of their family on a website Sunday night and Eagle Eyes fan immediately noticed she also followed this plan for the release of additional photos for her pregnancy photo shoot after posting the now famous announcement image on her Instagram. Corny Carter and Beyonce Giselle Knowles first clapped eyes on each other in 2001, but it wasn't until a year later when they collaborated in hit track Bonnie and Clyde that sparkles really started to fly. Bill was still 18 at the time and Jay-Z was 12 years her senior. I was 18, she said, when we met. 19 when we started dating. There was no rush. No one expected me to run off and get married, the pop stunner later said. And that's exactly what they did, took it slow and built a friendship before falling in love. As usual fashionistas from the Smash Look, we always proceed our show with the interview. And this time around, our guest is always, always a surprise. These days, we always keep our guests as surprises because we always want to, to surprise our viewers. Well, let's see our interview with a surprise. Fashionistas, fashionistas, well today we are with one of the best artists in Rwanda and here we are with Mani Malta, he's here to tell us more about his career, what drove him in, into wanting to become a musician and of course not forgetting to talk about his sense of style. So Mani Malta, tell me, what drove you into wanting to become a musician? Yeah, music has actually been in my life since I was six years old and you know I could sing to my friends, my classmates, my teachers and all that. It was just like memorizing songs that I had on radio. But when I was n nine years, that's, that's when uh, one of my teachers told me, he said to me, maybe you're an artist, maybe you'll be a big artist. But I was like, OK. Um, I didn't know what an artist mean, but um, I just kept on you know, loving music, loving the music. Back in the in day, we had only one radio station, so we could only listen to Radio Rwanda, and the songs were the same. So if you had a, a song at 5 p.m., then tomorrow at 5 p.m., it's going to be the same song. So I could uh, take it as an opportunity to memorize the songs. I kept on singing like that until I joined the church, and then after the church, um, even in the church, I could lead most of the songs, even though I was, you know, this little boy. 
but music as a career, I really started doing it. Um, I decided to do music as a career back in 2010. So now it's been like seven years doing music as a career. Why music? Why not something else? Why music? Because um, that was by the time when I, I, I was at the end of my high school. So I was trying myself to see what can I do in life? What am I going to be doing? Because I never knew that I would get a chance to even study the university. And, you know, that was my my time to think about what I'm going to be doing. So I searched myself and I found that music was the only thing that I could do better. So uh, yeah, that's how it just came as, a, as, a, as an idea. So what are the challenges you faced when you first joined the music industry? I actually joined the music industry as a career when I was already known. As, as a you know as a church singer as a gospel singer because people uh, people discovered the name Manny Martin back in 2006 when I released this gospel song called Urukumbuzi. so the first challenge was um, for me to do music as uh, without the borders because I wanted to do music as you know some um, something that can of course, um, that I can make a living out of, but also as um, you know, as a tool to to spread all the messages to everyone, not only people who go to church. So that was a big challenge for me because people could not really understand what's happening. Of course, they were seeing the change. They were seeing. You know, this young boy who used to be a church singer who is going to be performing in the clubs, you know, in the, you know, what they call, uh, I don't know, but in Kinyarwanda he has a, he has a, a very negative uh, um, name, but to me it was more like, I need to do this, this is all I want to do, and this is... Uh, you know, this is the only thing that I can do for my la in my life. But for them, they were seeing someone who is um, going wrong, always, you know, trying to do something very bad. So that was the challenge because you can imagine all the media houses were talking about me negatively. And every fan that I had uh, in church was really against my idea to do music as something wide. That was the first challenge that I faced. Um, Tell me, how do you handle mistakes when you're performing? Something about me when I'm on stage. Um, I don't know how it sounds like, but uh, I don't feel like me, like the me who is right now here. I feel, uh, I feel more like there's um, a very strong power that has captured me that is making me doing what I'm doing and I don't really think about anything else. Um, I also wonder where the power comes from but I believe that it comes from God because um, when I'm on the stage I cannot really uh, think about the mistake. Of course the mistakes happen every time they, they happen. When you, when, when you watch the video you see like uh, there are things that have happened that you haven't practiced like that. But um, how do I handle them? I really don't think about them. So do you ever get nervous when you're about to perform? Just like I might get nervous, <laughs> so of course. So what do you do to cool down the, the nervousness? Before I go on stage, I always get nervous. And you know, you always have questions like, what am I going to do? And how are they going to receive me like? You know, an artist like me who performs uh, like in different places, like different countries, sometimes you don't even know if they're going to enjoy your music. Maybe you're performing in, in Tanzania. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about this uh, <laughs> because there's, uh, there's like when my first time to perform for, for an international audience, like for my first international performance was in Zanzibar. That was in Saudi Abu Sara Festival. It was like, you know, the very first time I'm going to be on stage for, for the people, for the crowd that is not Rwandan, that is not, you know, that is not so used to my music. The first challenge that I had was I could not even speak a word in front of them. 
I could not even say, hey, my name is Manny Martin, I come from Rwanda and I'm going to do this and this. I could not say that because when I, go, I just got on the stage and everyone was looking so, um, so cold because they never experienced my music and, you know, you know, it's a festival that puts together people from different countries, Europe, America, Africa, and some few Tanzanians. Yeah. And first of all, uh, I was like, am I going to speak Swahili? Am I going to speak English, French, Kinyarwanda, what? So uh, I just ended up, you know, starting singing without even saying a word. So it was a very big challenge because, you know, you never know what's, what's going to happen. So how often do you practice your voice? Mm, uh, how often do I train? Me, I'm a person who sings every, every time. In the shower, in my sitting room, in my bedroom, everywhere I am, I sing. I only stop singing when I'm in class, because you know, it's not possible. <laughs> I want to focus and I don't want to disturb others, but I, I sing every time. Um, Mostly in the morning when I'm when I'm um, when I'm on my way going to the gym, I, I this uh, the first training that I do is in the morning because you know I put the headphones in my ears and start singing to either my songs or someone else's song. Uh, yeah, to train my voice. But I have only uh, twice a week with my band. We do like this serious serious uh, practice. So tell me, what are the five things that you can't live without? Five things. Um, music. Um. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. There is music. Uh, there is um, my art, art crafts in, in, in my house. Mm -hmm. There is uh, candlelight in my house. There is... Um, Art and candlelight are in one book. Those are ready too. No. You have to go. No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to go. Candlelight <laughs> is something that I really, really love that I can even switch on even right now here where we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's also um, my auntie's family. Mm. Cannot live without it because you know it's the only family that I have in this town that I always go to. So what is something so special about you that people don't know? Someone who is so selective when it comes to making friends. I don't really make a lot of friends, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, when, when, it's, when, when, in, when I'm about to, you know, to be a friend with someone, so I'm so, so much selective. What was your first dream before you became a musician? My biggest dream before I, before I became an artist, um, I thought I was going to be a journalist because radio was my favorite thing. And, you know, as I was getting closer to the radio, listening to songs, but also uh, I could also imitate some voices of the journalists. So. One I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imitate those ones because now, you know, I was a kid and now I'm a grown man. So uh, my biggest dream was to become a journalist. Um, tell me about your sense of style. What do you like wearing as an artist when you're performing? What do you wear when you're performing? What do you wear over the weekend? Tell me more about your sense of style. What do you like wearing as an artist? I, I cannot say that I'm, I'm more of uh, jeans or pants person because I can wear anything it's it's according to the mood according to the event that I'm going to according to the people that I'm going to meet you know according to them also to the you know to the perception of uh, the society of course sometimes it counts uh, but to me it doesn't count a lot and <laughs> also um, but my favorite color would be black and purple. Not all of them together, but black is my favorite color and purple is my favorite color. As usual fashionistas, let's proceed our show with a look tip. Last time we spoke about five ways to wear jeans and look so professional at office. But this time around, we always go back to the ladies and we're going to talk about what to wear 
when the weather is not fair enough. As you guys already know, we are in May closely to April and April is a time where is a period where it's rainy it's a rainy season and it's really hard for some people to keep up to date or to keep styled up because they don't want to put on all the sweaters because it's gonna spoil their fashion or their style well this time around we're gonna talk about how to style yourself or look amazing in beautiful clothes when you're covering yourself well let's see the look tip with what to wear when the season is not that fair enough and our look tip of this week, we're going to talk about how to dress for the cold weather and still look cute. The cold weather season is here again and choosing the perfect wardrobe that would make you feel comfortable and look cute simultaneously can be particularly challenging for some. It is one thing to lay up for the cold weather with warm, cozy outfit and end up feeling like a bomb and quite another to dress snugly and still look cute. So to help you out, we have compiled a section of wow fashion ideas on how to dress for the cold weather and still look cute. Here are a couple of wow we have for the handpick and which we believe will work out for every woman irrespective of her body fineness. First, get a statement scarf. A nicely patterned statement scarf with a fairly black and burgundy leather look would totally make you your outfit brighter, colored and accessorized are greater workout with clothes for the daring combination of clashy colors as well as blending just a pop and a fun chunky scarf to go. The trick to make conflicting color cute, especially with laying out up with, with the cold weather, is to combine just a pop and a fun scarf with simple solid to complete your wow look. Wear the scarf around your neck or simply don the hijab style to protect your face from the chilly wind while keeping your cute. Create your wow moment with a long and heavy cardigan or a suede look trench coat that would keep you cozy for the long in the cold winter weather. As usual fashionistas, we can't just end our show without talking about the trends, what has been happening in the fashion world or events. But this time around, we're talking about Fashion Weeks! This time around, it's all about Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week. But we're going to focus on the New York Fashion Week that happened over the past weekend. Not forgetting to talk about the models, Gigi Hadid, Bella Hadid, um, Jordan Dune. Not forgetting to talk about Kendall Jenner. All those beautiful models, they looked ravishing on the runway. Not forgetting to talk about designers who showcased beautiful clothes. Well, this show was one hell of a show. Not forgetting to talk about the performances. Well, you're going to see it all for yourself. Well, let's see the New York Fashion Week with the trends. The New York Fashion Week Fall Winter 2017 just clapped off with hints of trends that could hit shopping ranks in the month. Suede, velvet, off shoulders, leopard print, polka dot, military green, patchworks, and the 60 and 70 and 80 dresses are still in. But this season, the sport lacks and the athletic leather trend that reached last year's has taken a backstage for the fall winter in New York this year. Months to come and different designers showcase their beautiful collections, the likes of Alexander Wenk, Philippe Plain, Calvin Klein, Victoria Beckham and many others. Instead, there is a revival of the new romantic think of female popularity, flowers and bush of summer colors, yes, for the fall winter this year. Josie Natiro, a Filipino Japanese designer based in New York, presented a black, white, navy, blue, red and gold collection ascendant with, uh, with animal prints, chemo and tattoo embroidered stockings and oversized fan shape earrings. Meanwhile, the New York best Filipino designer Monique showcased a 2017 ready wear collection with touches of elements. Well, my beautiful people, that is the show we had for you. Not forgetting to always, always say a very big thank you to Grazia Apartments for always giving us the beautiful venue. You guys who keep watching the entire show, my viewers, my team, thank you so much. If you forgot to watch the show, you know you can still catch it up on Saturday at 6.15. If you fail to watch the show on Saturday at 6.15, you can go on our YouTube channel by typing in style by Kawagire Christel. For more comments and suggestions on more you want to see on the show, you can still follow us on our Facebook. Well, that is the show we had for you. Till next time.